Happy Monday, everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. So tonight, for Meeple Monday, I will be playing a couple games of... I like to say number nine, but it's NMBR9. Nice, quick, simple game. Complete play it solo or with multiple people. And then after that, I will be unboxing Merchant's Cove, which just arrived in the mail this weekend from Final Frontier Games Kickstarter, which, loving the artwork that they do, that they have the Miko help with, and it's being an, it being an asymmetrical game, and Final Frontier already makes one of my top five games of all time. It was an easy back for me, so I'm really happy that it finally came in. But yeah, I didn't play anything this weekend. So it's last time I played a game was like, well, technically a weekend. It was Friday night, but I haven't played anything since then. So as you can see, I got some sun this weekend. I went and hung out with my family. Uh, my brother is not too far away. Went to see him, his wife, his kids, hung out, really get to just relax, hang out with them all day Saturday, and then Sunday I knew the weather was nice, and so I decided I'd get outside. And mistakenly, I forgot my sunscreen. So I'm sporting the the new farmer stand style of red up top, nothing below because of my mask I got a sunburn on just my forehead and part of my nose and of course the arms but what's more fun is you got, I got a red forehead today doesn't look great doesn't suit me but hopefully soon it will fade away and put some aloe lotion and whatnot on it to help it heal fast but it, on the bright side, it does not shine as bright in these lights, so I don't have a shiny white head today. It is red. But yeah, if you played anything this weekend, if you learned something new, got anything in the mail, let me know. I always love to hear what you're playing. And potentially learn about new games, or at least new to me, so I can try something new as well. Decided tonight's music would be from the synthwave section. I use Pretzel Rocks uh, since they have both stream safe and YouTube safe music. And so I can kind of select if I want like R&B, if I want rock, if I want synthwave, a little bit of country. So if I, I want to select if it does or does not have vocals, um, if you hear words or not because depending on how distracting it may or may not be. So I do what I can to have a little fun with it. Thought I'd mix it up and try a different playlist tonight. Now it does play randomly on its own, so I can't say, hey, I don't like that song as easily. I could skip it if I want to, but I like them. It's enjoyable enough. Now, if you are in chat and you are not following me, please hit that follow button. I am 10 followers away from hitting affiliate. Once we do that, I can do channel points and y'all can redeem stuff and really do polls and whatnot like that to really have fun with it. Yeah, we can do subscribers, but that's not as big a deal. I want y'all to be able to vote in polls. I want y'all to be able to redeem points. Hey, tell me to hydrate or tell me to do something different or weird. Whatever y'all want to help help me decide to set up but yeah I'm getting there getting close with your help I can make it so let's have a little fun as we get there why don't we like I said tonight we will be playing number nine by Z-Man games it is typically a one to four player game but playing by the solar rules it's basically the exact same way you would play with multiple players because it's either I beat someone else's score or beat your own score so you can play along if you like if you have your own copy 
unfortunately, I do not have a print and play, play link this week, but I'll show you how easy it is to play. I'll tell you the rules and then probably play a couple games because they do play very quickly, especially when playing solo. Let's go and switch the view and I can show you the game real quick. So I've already had, had it relatively set up, but this only takes moments to do on your own. Because the box has an insert with all the number tiles already in there in their own spots. So you can just open the box onto the table. You don't even have to pull them out and sort them. So this is a game where we have a deck of... 20 cards and each number from the box appears in the deck two times what we're going to end up doing is drawing one card at a time and then taking that number and adding it to our pile of numbers arranging them so that they each touch each other in some way and as you have enough there you can stack later numbers on top of them as long as they overlap at least two numbers and don't overhang at all the higher up they are in the stack the more points they become for the in-game score. Now, anything on the table, not stacked on anything else, not worth any points. Anything on the next level is one times the number it's, that it is. Next stack up is two times the number. So, pretty easy to score, pretty easy to play. So easy. In fact, full rules for the contents, setup, concept, playing the game, Tile rules on stacking, solo, fits on front and back of one page. Not many games can do that. I'm saying that my head's cut off. Let's do this for you so you can see me a bit better. So yeah, I'll go through a game. Uh, if you want to play, if you have your own copy, play along with me. Or if you're watching this later, find a way to play, do that as well. Otherwise, I hope the instructions help you learn how to play, and then you can go play this with someone else on your own time as well. So we're going to start. This is how easy it is. I already shuffled the deck. We're going to reveal one card at a time. Take that tile from the box and place it into our area, which I'm going to be playing it right here on the table, wherever you want to play. Typically in the game, you can kind of have this in the middle of the table between all players. Same with the deck of cards. So our first card is going to be, our first card, first number is 6. What we're going to do, take the 6, place it on the table. When, the, when you set these, you can rotate them however you want. The only thing you can't do is flip them over. The number does need to be face up. So I'm just going to put it right here within easy view of the camera. First one, unfortunately, you know will never score for you because it is level 0. The next number is going to be a 7. So any tile that you place has to touch at least the side square to square. And if you look closely, each of these numbers has a little grid on them. You should be lining up those grid lines with another tile in some way. So in this instance, I could touch it just one, one touching. I could turn this. I could try to set it in, in between there which could give me a bigger base to overlap stuff on top of. I could go on the outside of it, however I want to do this. The only thing you can't do, besides turning it over of course, is go diagonal. They do have to touch either side by side in some way, where the grid lines line up. Now, I like having a thick base to build stuff onto, so I'm going to actually intertwine those because you don't want any empty spaces when you're overhanging because you can't overhang a number on top of it. There can't be anything under, em anything empty underneath a later letter or number. So our next one's going to be nine. Now, unfortunately, there's these first two we know don't score at all. They're considered level zero. Now, if I choose to, I can fit this on top in some way as long as it overlaps at least two different tiles 
and does not overhang in any way. So I could not do this um, over here because there would be empty space underneath these spots. Now I don't think there's a way to turn this where it doesn't overlap both, but no matter what, if I put it down below, that's no points for that nine. If I get it to this level, it's considered level one, and it's one times that nine. So it's already nine points. Um, I'm going to play it. I'm going to go risky and not overlap yet and go on top yet. I'm going to build a pretty big base and then build up if I can. So, our next number is our number one. Now again, this is another good candidate for your base level because it's either one or nothing. So you're not losing much to use this as part of your base. So I'll do that right there. Next up is zero. Let's verify what the rules on if zeros are tens or zero. I see it if it actually says if a zero is considered a zero or a ten. I believe I've always played it where it's considered a zero. So we're going to treat it as a zero. And because of that, we'll use it to increase our base. I don't need this. I'll build out that corner a little bit more. Okay. And our next one. It's going to be a two. This may not be a bad time to start building upwards. Depending on how well I can fit this shape around all these other things. Because remember, I'm also trying to avoid leaving empty spots that I can't stack onto. I'm gonna try that right there. Okay, now an eight. So now is where we're starting to get some value. See, what I can't do is that right there, because that would only cover one tile. I could choose to come in like this. That covers at least two different tiles underneath. Or I could, of course, put it somewhere else. I do like that option up here. So that's guaranteed eight points at least. And now for a five. I'll try it right here. It's gonna give me over at least two different tiles and gets me side by side so I can potentially stack to the next level too. Next up we have four. Definitely a little bit trickier. That fits in right there. And our, our second two. Fit that in under the base level right there to have a two spot that might help us out soon enough into seven. 
see, we can't do this because that's only on one tile. Can't do this because of empty space underneath. But building up our base level isn't a bad idea right now. See if we can get, start getting higher though. Because now, if I was to get it up to this level, that's two times whatever I placed there. I like this thought though. That should work. Okay, and a six. I was going to do that right there. That gets us to a second level. So that now that's going to be two times the six, 12 points for that one tile. Okay, next up we have four again. And remember, you can't place it perfectly on top. It has to overlap at least two tiles with no empty spaces underneath it. So this may end up being a base piece again, unfortunately. Oh, we can actually fit it in right here on level one. Okay, and our next one was a one. I think building up right here easy enough. Guarantees that spot and I can open up that space for stacking more. And another eight. Remember we can rotate these but we cannot flip them over. So, like I can't fit it here. Overhangs. I couldn't flip over to do that. I could do this though. It fits that spot, but I'm actually like this a little bit better. And this is zero. Well, pros and cons to finding this zero is I do have that one empty spot right there. Opens up to placing on top of it a little bit easier. It's still a zero though. Next up we have. Well, I don't think we're going to be able to place this at this upper level in any way. I may have got just got stuck, so I'm going to try to build up in this corner if I can. Hopefully in time. Another five. This is where it gets tricky at the end of the game because you've built up too fast and you can't stack as easily. So I can't do that. Not, it's not two tiles, it doesn't overhang. But I can do that right there. Now that is considered the third level up times five is guaranteed 15 points. And our last is a nine. Did I mess myself up? I, maybe I shouldn't have. Well, no. Maybe we ended up doing that well enough because I don't think that 9 would have fit at that upper level anyway. But I don't think... Yeah, I can't put it here because that's an empty space. Empty spaces. So unfortunately this 9 probably won't score for us at all. Yeah, because I don't see a way to do it without empty overhang spaces, yep. So that's going to end up being a base level. So that's the whole deck, and now we're going to go through scoring. Like we said, anything at the uppermost level, depending on how many levels up it is, multiplies its score. So anything on the table itself, level 0. Next level up, level 1, level 2, and so on. Now, we said this 5 was level 3. 
F. So that makes it 15. I'm going to separate my level 3, 2, and 1s here. So level 2, an 8, and a 6. And of course the 0, which we said was kind of going to count as 0. Now my level 1, I had a 4, a 3, an 8, a 5, a 4, and a 1. All of those on the table do not score. So let's add these up. Make this easy. Go from high to low. 5 times 3 is 15. That was a 0. 2 times 8 is 16. So we're currently at 31. 6 times 2 is 12. Puts us at 43. All these only count once each. 43 plus 8, 51. 52, 55, 60, 64, 68 points. So, I have not played this a lot with other people. I've primarily played solo. I do feel this was probably one of my better games. Um, but you can tell me, either in chat or if you're watching this later, tell me how you score. Um, let me know if you typically score higher, lower, if you played along, if you beat me or not. Um, happy if you do. Um, that's the point of this channel is to play games and spread joy. It's not about the winning. It's about playing together, having fun together, spreading my joy of the hobby, hopefully leaving you with a smile. So what I'm gonna do, and this is how easy cleanup is, you put them right back in the box. So what I'll probably do, I'll probably play one more game, and then we'll go to the unboxing. Now typically I do unboxings on a Friday night, during my unboxing the week, at 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Now this week I will be out of town traveling to go visit the charity board gamer, and we will be streaming on Saturday, probably about 12 hours or so of just hanging out, playing games, and streaming those games for you. So this week I will not be doing my Friday night unboxing stream. So instead, I decided to combine both of my streams this week and give you all a bonus unboxing. Instead of waiting a couple of weeks, y'all get to see me unbox Merchant's Cove, which just arrived from a Kickstarter are back from Final Frontier Games. Now, this is a game I went all in on, backed all the expansions, because a Final Frontier has one of my favorite games in Rush to Nobility, which is a dice as worker placement game that does really well at mitigating the luck. So even though it's dice and luck based, you have a lot of options in how you go about if you roll high or low dice. So you're not screwed if you just roll one number. You you have a lot of options. And so I've always enjoyed that. And then, of course, the artwork is just fantastic in all their games. Most of their games, they get uh, the Miko to do their artwork. And they kind of set all their games in the same kind of fantasy realm. And so this new game, Merchant's Cove, same artist, the Miko, same general realm, and same art style. But this time, it's an asymmetric game that allows some interaction in the middle of the table of there's kind of uh, people coming onto boats and traveling and selling their wares and what you're doing is you have your own board, sp board space which has its own unique mechanic some players may be doing a kind of a worker placement style. Some may do be doing dice rollings. Uh, one may be doing a cascading marble effect, kind of like a potion explosion. Another may be doing a lot more manipulation. But you have your own mini engine game that you're playing. And then you're affecting the board that everyone is playing to or against um, to affect the types of wares you're selling and how much they're, how, how they're valued. So it should be really interesting, especially since it has solo, so even as a solo game, with all the expansions I have, I should have at least seven 
different, basically, seven different games. Because it's seven different types of mechanics for the seven different character boards to choose from. On top of multiplayer, and then seeing how they play, and then figuring out the strategies for each of those. So, should be a lot of good experiences with that and learning. So I'll probably, once I figure out the game, I'll probably play it here on stream, show it off, hopefully. Some of y'all have backed and have a chance to play as well, along with me. Kind of test and see how well your luck is, and if you mitigate it better than I do. So right now what I'm doing, I'm actually shuffling the deck of cards, if I didn't drop them all, because they are very small cards. I'm shuffling the deck of cards, I'm going to play number 9 at least one more time before I get to the unboxing. So, like I said, it's pretty straightforward, easy to play a game. Uh, that first game we played in, what, 15, 20 minutes while I was talking, explaining, and teaching. And so this is something you can easily pull out as a filler between games. You're waiting on someone to show up to game night. You want to play it by yourself. I've even played it where... I play it over Instagram using my stories where I reveal a, like, hey, we're going to play this. If you have the game, join along. I reveal one card at a time in the stories and then show what my score and final stack were at the end and then people can comment what their scores were. And that was worked really well at the beginning of, of the pandemic last year when we were all trying to figure out how to still kind of connect and play games when we couldn't necessarily go to game groups. So this was, this and Sagrada were kind of my Instagram games that I figured out how to play. So this one, of course, is extremely easy to do. So let's play another one. We're going to start with seven. Right there, nice and easy. So if you were playing with other people, they, have, they would, of course, all grab the seven from the box. So there is enough in here for four players or you could pull it out if you had multiple copies you could have multiple copies being used at the same time family game so we got zero this time Ooh. not sure I want to create too many holes try that that gray almost blends in very well with my game mat okay we got an eight and again, that's going to be hard to score at all right now, so I'm just going to start building my base up. Six. I can't fit it there. It's probably a little early for me to build my upper level before I know too much. And we build it out a little bit. That base level. Three. Really start building this out if I wanted to. Yeah. Let's get a solid base going. And a four. I do like that. I was thinking that would fit right there very well. Okay, we're currently at six of 20 different cards. Uh, five. Now may be the time I start building this next level. Yeah, I'm going to do that right there. And a one, and a two. Now remember, you cannot turn these over face side up. You can never replace diagonal, only adjacent. Now, make sure you're lining up these grid spaces every time. You can do one grid, multiple grids, but they always have to line up. And when you're laying on top of a level, each the p new tile has to overlap at least two tiles from the previous level. And do I want to do that yet? No, I want to keep my base. It's just a one. Now 
Now you do want to be careful and mindful of creating too many holes and gaps in your area. Like that right there would create an unnecessary gap that would limit me, limit me later. This probably isn't a great move because I can't come around that very easily. It really limits that use. So, it's probably, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Early enough in the game I could still afford to put one more base down. Okay, and we'll get another two. Okay, so now I'll start building up. Remember, I'm overlapping at least two. I don't want to do that. One, two, three. Most of these are four tall, about three wide. So I'm not sure I want to do that right there. So I can't go straight up and down on it like that. But I can turn it, and that would hit at least one gap on that one. And an eight. Ooh, I could split that gap. That leaves that corner wide open. Yeah, I think I have to do that. Okay. And a five. Now here's where I can start considering do I want to put it on to the next level or not, if there's room. I'm not sure I do though. May not be a great move, but we'll see what happens. And four. Yeah, I may have just blocked myself off from making progress on this next level. May have been my downfall. Try this though. No, I've really got to start aiming and going upwards with these next moves. Which I think I can't do that because of the empty space. Empty space. I could do that. Oh, shifting it that way helps. There we go. And a one. Okay, I was looking for that because I saved this spot just for that. Hopefully that pays off. And seven. Oh, gapped. That's not what I want to see. Seven. The seven is one of the hardest ones to place. At least on the upper level. Just because of the way it shifts and moves. Yeah, I think it's gonna stay low. Use that gap to our advantage. Maybe we can build up really fast. Oh, well, I'll at least get that right there. I don't think I can get this that level. Oh, did I just waste sector? Maybe. I don't know. About to find out the hard way. 
Well, at least give us a solid base to do our next terrible move. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to put this zero to the side so it doesn't interfere with this last card, which is a nine. Which I cannot get up at all. I won't put there at all, so I just have to do that. So that game went very terribly for me. So level two, I have nine and three. Level one, I have. Five, five, eight, one, two, and a nine. These do not score. So that's 18, 24, 34, 42, 52, 54. So not as good as my first game. But still enjoyable nonetheless. So I think I'll switch over and start doing the unboxing now. So yeah, that was number nine. Quick and very easy to play. Like you saw, that didn't even take ten minutes, and that was a very laid-back, not rushed, talking through the game style. So you can easily play in five minutes flat. And packing up, like like you saw earlier, it's very easy very fast. Each of these numbers has its own spot in the box. And because it's only one deck of cards that once you flip them all, they are still in the deck. We're packed away. That's it. That's all it takes.